Okay, so um, next I have um, two postulates to go over with you. Very important postulates. The first one, and uh, I think we're going to do constructions on both of them in class. The first one is called the parallel postulate. And, and instead of writing it down, we're just going to talk about it, okay? Um, and, and we'll write down the key, the key idea. So um, uh, picture this idea. You have uh, a parallel line. Or, I'm sorry, not a parallel. You have a, a line, and let me do it. Let me do it better. Okay. So you have here, you have a line. Okay. All right. Call it line L. And somewhere in space, you have a point. Call it P. The question is, how many lines can go? How many lines that are going to be parallel to L can go through P? Okay, the answer comes out to be one. So there is one parallel line, parallel postion. One, we could put only, we'll put only, only one parallel line only one parallel line to line L through point P. Okay? So there's only one. Only one in the world that you could draw. And I'll draw it here in a second. I use a different color to draw it. Let's use orange. And again, if you put um, if you put there we go, we're on P. Uh oh. Okay. There's that parallel line. Okay, sorry for the for the uh, mess up there. Okay, there is that one parallel line that goes through P and is parallel to L. So we'll call it call it M. And again, remember to make it parallel. Put the arrows on it. Okay, so there's the parallel posture. Only one parallel line to line L through P. We have a similar postulate called the perpendicular uh, uh, postulate. Okay, similar idea. Okay, let's do it in in purple. The perpendicular postulate. Okay, you know what? I'm going to hold off on that until the next section. Okay, we'll back up there. Okay. All right. So now we need to talk about a very important idea. Okay, this idea is going to be called two lines cut by a transversal. Transversal. That's an A. Okay? It's a very important idea. Two lines cut by a transversal. A transversal, okay, intersects two lines at different places. So here's an example of a of a of a picture. Okay, we'll do an example down here. Okay, example. So um, here is one line. Call it line L. Here is another line. Call it line M. It doesn't matter if they're going to intersect or not. I don't care. But what happens is you have another line, a third line, going down through those two lines. We're going to call this line T. T stands for transversal. T stands for transversal. Okay, transversal. So where does this line T, why is it a transversal? Well, look where it intersects the lines. It intersects line L here, call it point P. Intersects line M here, call it point Q. Two different, two different intersection points. That's why it makes a transversal. Okay? So now, we're going to look at what kind of angles? There are different angle pairs that are formed by this two lines cut by a transversal. So we're going to talk about those angle pairs. Okay, so let's draw another picture. Um, again, just draw, uh, so we'll talk about the special angle pairs. Okay, so um, first of all, I need a picture 
to do this with. All right, so we need two lines cut by a transversal. So I'm going to make my nice and neat. All right, so again, I kind of cheated and paused. Here are my two lines cut by a transversal. Again, I wanted them to be nice and neat so that we could um, have a good example. So here's line L, here's line M, and we'll call this the transversal T because here's where it intersects. And let's go ahead and put some angles some. Let's put, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and we're going to talk about four types of angle pairs, and we'll do them in different different colors so that so that we'll know. Okay, so the first pair is called corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are in the same position down the transversal. Okay, so we'll look at the corresponding angle pairs. If we look at angle one. Angle 1, and so here's angle 1. If you slide down T, 3 is in the same position. Angle 1 and angle 3 are corresponding angles. Angle 2, and if you slide down the transversal, angle 4 are corresponding angles. We can continue. Angle 5, slide down, is corresponding with angle 7. And angle 6, slide down, is corresponding to angle 8. So there's your corresponding angle pairs. Just slide down the transversal. Okay. Second, we're going to talk about alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are going to be in the, the word in means in between the parallel lines. So in between L and M, and alternating means opposite sides of the transversal. So uh, again, we throw out 1 and 8 and 4 and 5 because they're outside those lines. So we look at angle 2. Angle 2 is an alternate interior angle with angle 6. Angle, angle 3 is going to be an alternate interior angle with angle 7. Okay, Inside the lines on opposite sides of the transversal. Next, we'll look at alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles are outside the parallel lines, or not, not parallel, outside the two lines, but they're on opposite sides, again, of the transversal. So if I look at angle 1, angle 1 is outside L. It's opposite to 5, which is also outside M. So angle 1 and angle 5. Angle 4 is an alternate exterior angle with angle 8 on opposite sides of the transversal outside those lines. And then lastly, we have, um, we call them same side interior angles. The book will also call them consecutive interior, but I call them same side. So we use the word consecutive, but nonetheless, same side interior, just what it says. Interior, interior. So I forgot to mention exterior, right? Exterior means outside. Exterior, interior, inside, and on the same side of the transversal. So we're looking at angles 2 and angle 3, and angle 6 and angle 7. Okay, so um, this is very important. We will look at um, some more examples in class of these ideas. So this is section 3.1. Uh, one more video on section 3.2. Very short video.